First Kings chapter six. I honor the Lord today. Amen. He's first in my life. Yeah. I thank Him for my life, health, and strength. I thank Him for the Holy Ghost. I thank Him for my wife. I thank Him for my children, my grands, great grand. I thank Him for my mom, my dad, yet being here with us. I thank God for all of you, Amen. Because Amen, the circle has not been broken. We are still able, Amen. Even though we've gone through trials and tribulations, we are still able, Amen, to come together, Amen, and serve the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. First King chapter six. Amen. Beginning, Amen, at the ninth verse. So Solomon built the house and finished it and covered the house with beams and boards of cedar. And then he built chambers against all the house, five cubits high, and they rested on the house with timber of cedar. And the word of the Lord came unto Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes, look at your neighbor, walk in the statutes of the Lord. Walk in the statutes of the Lord. There is a blessing in walking in the statutes of the Lord. And execute my judgments. Whatever God says, carry it out. Do it just like the Lord say do it. And it will work. And keep all my commandments to walk in them. Then will I perform my word with thee. Look at this and they keep all of his commandments. All of his commandments. Not some of them. Not some of them. But all of them. all of them. With the spirit of God in us. Yeah. We're able, amen, to please the Lord. And in pleasing him, he'll make even our enemies to be at peace with us. He'll call them in doors, amen, that were not there to be formed, amen. And open them wide, amen, and pour out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive all of them. When we walk and execute the judgments of God and keep all of his commandments. Yes. To walk in them. Not just to talk about them, but to live them out. Amen. Look at this neighbor. Everybody can talk about the word. But everybody don't live the word. It takes a man, a spirit filled, a man, woman, a man of God, amen, to live the word. And without the spirit, amen, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible, amen. Without faith in God, it's impossible to please him. Then it says, I will perform my word with thee. I will perform my word with thee. Say it out of your mouth. God will, God will perform, his perform his word to me. To me. Make it personal. God, God will perform his word, his word to, me. to me. God will, God will perform his word, his word to, me. To, me. to me. Which he spake unto David our father. Amen. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. Look at this. God will not forsake us. Tell you that God will not forsake us. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what nobody say. Amen. I don't care what nobody do. Amen. God will not forsake his people. Look at this. I said God will not forsake you. God is for you. His thoughts concerning you are to do you good. And not evil. To give you an expected end. Of success. God wants us to be successful. God wants us to be successful in everything we put our hands to do. As long as we honor God with it, amen, God, amen, will cause, amen, it to prosper in our very eyes. And those around us will know that the Lord is with us. Tell you the Lord is with me. I don't know about you. Don't say, I don't know about you, but the Lord is with me. I know he's with me. Y'all talking sort of brag, but I know God is with me. Now, I hope he's with you, but I know he's with me. Hallelujah. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. Look at his neighbor. Whatever God assigned to your hands, you still got to finish it. You can't jump ship. Can't jump. Everything, every time they they, they just quite right. You can't jump ship. Can't jump. I, 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 I know my son Brian, man, has a hard time ministering, man, and praise and worship, man, when, when, when the music is not this right, or when the song is not this right, or when things are just right. But he does it anyway because yes, you can't stop doing it, man. You got to keep on doing it and yeah. God supply everything that you need, man. You got to prove yourself faithful, man, even when things don't look good. Yeah. You got to prove yourself faithful, man, when, you, when, when things ain't working out in your household. I mean, you've been, you been paying your time. 
you've been giving your offering, amen, and you still, amen, got your debt. You still got bills behind. Yeah. And, and, and you're sitting here saying, Lord, I'm doing my part. What, what's happening? God is testing you. Look at this. God is testing you. And when God gets through testing you, amen, the blessing is going to follow, amen, the testing. Amen. The problem is we jump ship before the test is over. Before you pass the test, amen, you jump ship. No, stay on the boat, amen. Don't leave the boat until God calls you. Amen. God called Peter. Amen. He stepped out the boat, boy. He stepped out because God called him, not because he did it on his own. Don't leave the ship until you find, amen, God saying, come. And when God says, come, fear not because he's with you wherever you are, even on the waters. Even on the waters. And he built the walls of the house within the, with the boards and the cedars, both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling. And he covered them on the inside with wood and covered the floor of the house with planks of fir. And he built 20 cubits on the side of the house, both the floor and the walls with boards of cedar. He built them for it within, even for the oracle, the word of God, even for the most holy place. And the house that is... The temple before it was 40 cubits long, and the cedar of the house within was carved with knobs and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone seen. When Solomon got through building the house to God's specification, All right. All right. except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Right. Except the Lord, amen, Builds the house, those that labor, labor in vain. Except God placed the pillars where He wanted them. Except God placed the foundation where He wanted. And when God pours the foundation and puts the people, amen, that He wants in that foundation part, guess what? That foundation will be sure. But if I try to place people where I want to place them, amen, it may not work. But if I listen to the voice of the Lord and say, God said, do this, and God said, do that, and I do it exactly like God said, do it, it will work. And it will stand strong and it will weather the storms of life. Because the storms of life are going to come in your life. Every day is not going to be sunny. Every day is not going to be sunshine and, 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 and blue sky. Some days you have a little thunder shower, but when the thunder showers come, amen, growth come. Without water, ain't nothing growing. Without rain, nothing ain't growing. As a matter of fact, they're worried about that now in Florida right now in the south part of the country because ain't no rain. And without rain, ain't nothing growing. Stuff will dry up and die. So don't, amen, get upset when you see the storm clouds raging in your life because God finna grow you up and make you strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So without no storm, amen, in your life, you ain't gonna grow, amen, you're not gonna become what God wants you to become. Hallelujah. I had to learn that over these 43 years, amen, of serving God, that storms are going to come. Storms are going to rise in your life, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Well, well, there's nothing you can do about it. God, amen, is the one, amen, controlling the storms in our lives, and when the appointed time comes, God will make the sun shine again in your life. But there will be growth, amen, after the storm. There will be growth after the storms in your life. If there's no growth, amen, you didn't, you, you didn't weather the storm. You came out of it. You ran. I love it when God, amen, sent his disciples out. He sent them out, amen, on the boat saying, go to the other side. And the moment they got in the boat, the skies were blue. Everything was pretty, amen. But the moment they got in the midst of the sea, it turned dark. Storms begin to rise, wind begin to blow, light begin to flash, the waves begin to crash into the boat, and they thought they were going to sink, amen. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, I see they're not ready yet. They're not ready. So here he comes walking on the water. Look at his neighbor. Who was there with God like that? <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. You can be in the midst of a hurricane, in the middle of a tornado, amen. God will come in the midst of you, that tornado, that storm, amen, and bring you out of it, amen. The Bible says that he, they saw him walking on the water. Now, I would have loved to have been there. I would have, Sister Mary, I would have loved to have been there. But I was, amen, in North Carolina, amen, Sister Thelma. One night, amen, with Bishop Brown, amen. And there was a little girl that came in there on a walk, amen, that feet were turned backwards. She was born that way. She was 10 years old, all going to be 11 her next birthday. She came in on that thing, and she was, well, with her feet turned backwards. And I was there that night. 
Just like Peter, hey amen, and those boys was on that stormy sea, I was there that night looking at that little girl with her feet turned backwards, and God decided he wanted to show out. God decided, not Bishop Brown, but God decided to show out that night. And the Bible, hey amen, he was preaching, hey amen, he, he got agitated, hey amen. He was trying to preach the word, and he kept looking at the little girl in the corner over there. He said, bro, hey, watch this. He said, come with me. Where we going? <laughs> and I saw him going in the direction of the looker. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> Let me show you something. I know you don't believe, because I didn't. I was like, what? These feet are turned backward and shriveled up. He said, God said, you can straighten my thing. I said, oh, Lord. He said, just put your hand and pray along with me. I, said, I, know you, I know you don't believe, but I heard God. And he began to pray. For about 10, 15 minutes, let the virtue go in. And I'm sitting there looking there at the back with feet. And he grabbed those back with feet. He said, God has to do it. And he went like that. Click. And they went click. You heard you heard a pop like Jesus. And he sat her down on the floor and they, and they straightened out. They, the shrivel part of it straightened out. Jesus. And that little girl took off. And she ran around that church so fast, it meant like she was a track star. Because she had never ran before. She ran and ran and ran and ran. And the next night you couldn't get in the building. Ah. For a whole week, amen, God showed out, amen, and God loves to show out. People of God, God wants to do it more than you want him to do it. God wants to do it more than you want him to do it. He's that kind of God. God loves, amen, doing extravagant things for us. He loves showing his power. He loves showing his love. He loves showing his glory to the people of God, to the children, amen, that he loves so dearly. Who he gave his life for. Well, yeah. Yes, well, yes. yeah. Thank you. Solomon built the temple yes. because God told him to. Uh -huh. And when he finished it, the Bible says, the glory of the Lord came well, down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When God gets through, amen, raising up, amen, a people in this house, amen, that he can, amen, depend on, yes. God says the glory going to fall yes. in the house. Yes. Oh, yeah. The Bible says it fell to the point where its smoke came from heaven and filled the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's something about smoke, amen, that comes from heaven. It does not have the choking effect. All right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Regular smoke, amen, will choke you. You yeah. find yourself coughing, amen. You find yourself not being able to breathe. But when the glory of God comes yeah. down, you yeah. inhale deeply, amen. You breathe it in, amen. And when you breathe it in, it transforms, amen, your thinking. Yeah. It transforms yeah. your heart. It transforms yeah. your soul, your emotions. It transforms everything yeah. about you, amen. When the glory fills the house, yeah. amen, it changes you yeah. from the inside out. Yeah. I the glory is going to fall in this place. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen the glory fall in this place a number of times. It's going to fall again. Yeah. It's going to fall again. When the glory truly falls in this place, you're going to be like, amen, some of this morning. Laid out on the floor, amen, stretched out somewhere. Amen. Some people, amen, were coming in the house, amen, back in that day when the last glory fell, and they walked through the door and fell. Poof. Could not get up, amen, because the glory was so strong in the house. Amen. The people of God were on one accord. When we get back on one accord, amen, having the same mind, same heart, and the same spirit, amen, the glory is going to fall again in this house. I don't care what nobody say, amen. God is not through with us yet. He's not through with us yet. He's not through with us yet. They're need, amen. When I look at Ray today, how bad he was on Friday, he was in bad shape. That knee was all full up there. Oh, Amen. Look like he had two knees up there. Well. Couldn't bend it at all. But in about 15, 20 minutes, amen, he was able to bend that knee. Well. In, in about 30 minutes, amen, he was able to, to, to move it and stand on it, amen. Well, he could hardly stand on it, amen, and twist and turn, amen. When I look at him today, strutting down the aisle. <laughs> he got a swag. All right, he got a swag, man. <laughs> he wasn't he swag, right? <laughs> he was limping. He was in pain. But he got his swag back today. Come on, give God a praise for his swag. Yeah, yeah. Everybody ought to have a spiritual swag. Yeah, right. on, I mean, everybody ought to have a spiritual swag. Yeah. There ought to be something about your walking, man, make the devil tremble. Yeah. There ought to be something about your talk, make the demons tremble, amen. Yeah. When they hear you coming, when they see you walking, they, yeah. they start getting nervous yeah. when they go in the day. When you live in the city, you live in the talk to, what they've been to do. Yeah. Oh, there was a time in the house.
of God, people felt that way. What, what's going to happen in the Holy Man today? Uh-huh. What God going to do today? Yeah. They had an expectancy when they walked yeah. through the door. They expected yeah. God. They expected yeah. God. They expected yeah. God. They expected yeah. God to do something yeah. today. Yeah. How many come to the house of God now? They expected God to do something. I expect God to show up every time I come to the house of God. I don't care how I manage it. I don't care about the crowd. I don't care about nothing. If two or three of us get together on one accord, yeah. And something needs to get done, and then God said He will show up and make sure it gets done. An army, man. Of, I, I like, I like what the uh, what the army say. An army of one, one with God is more than ten thousand. More than a thousand. Two are more than ten thousand. Three are more than a hundred thousand. And just keep on going. If God is with you. If God is for you, He is more than the whole world that can come against you. When you are with God, you are in the majority all the time. When you're with God, Sister Nelson, you're in the majority. On your job, when you walk in that job, God was with you, amen. You are the majority. When you go in the job, whatever that, you are in the, the majority because God is with you. Yeah. Whatever's going on in that office today, amen, guess what? Me and God are in charge. Yeah. When you open up your mouth and begin to pray, amen, God going to straighten it out, amen. Yeah. Yeah. It is all good timing. Yeah. And when he does it, it's going to be well straightened out. Amen. Yeah. Right there. Amen. When the glory fell yeah. in the house of God, yeah. the people were present to see yeah. it. Yeah. When the glory fell in the original house of God yeah. that Solomon built, the people, amen, praised God for days. Yeah. Because they knew that God was in the house. His spirit was in the house. Your petition was going to be answered. A way was going to be made. He was going to fight your enemies. He was going to fight your battles that you couldn't fight for yourself. He's going to do whatever you can't do. When the glory is in the house. I love it because the people knew that God was in the house. Because the glory came down. I said the people knew when God was in the house because the glory came down and rest in the place. And when the glory of God rests in the place, you can ask God what you will and God's going to do it right now. Not tomorrow, he's going to do it right then because the glory is there. There's nothing impossible with God when the glory shows up. And guess what? You should be carrying a piece of that glory in you. We are his representatives here on earth. A piece of his glory should be in us all the time. So that wherever we go, his glory is there. Wherever we go, his glory is there. Wherever we go, his glory is there. I don't care if it's in an alleyway. Wherever we go, the glory of God is there. And when the glory shows up, it takes him in authority over anything that's there. How many ready for the glory? Yeah. How many ready for the glory? Yeah. God has built the house. Yes, he has. God built this house. Yes. Well, Over 28 years, God built this house. Right. God paid off this house yeah. about five, six years ago. This house, amen, belongs to God. Yeah. And if God built it and established it, then it will stand. And I know that he did. Yeah. The vision, amen, he gave us, amen, is still standing. Yeah. Because the power of God is still present to heal and deliver and set free. Yeah. So I know, amen, that God's glory is still here. Well, it's just, amen, being subdued yeah. by yeah. doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Well. See, when y'all come to the house of God, y'all look around. Jesus. If you watch me, I don't come and look around. Because well. whoever is here is who's supposed to be here. At that moment. If you're looking at the seats, amen, this place is huge. The average church is not this big. The average church is about like from here to here and back to where Robert is. That's the average church. This is not an average church. This is not an average church. This church was built, amen, to bring in healing and deliverance, amen. To bring in the multitude, amen, to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Our job is to help them, amen, get what they don't have. Amen. And get what they need right now. Amen. That's our job. Amen. And God needs all men on deck. Yes. Wow. Yes. All hands on deck. Amen. God needs all hands on deck. Amen. 
Everybody. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Everybody in here has purpose. That's right. Well, That's right. Thank right. You. Everybody. I, I love it when Sister Mary and Sister Diane and uh, who was the other one with you all? Judy and Sister Glennis. Y'all took it upon yourself to get together and say, hey, there's a need. Right. And we can feel it. There is a need, and we can feel it. That's right. That's right. There is a need. Let me tell y'all something. When you pass through two churches, it's impossible to get to everybody. That's right. I would love to. I know people are angry with me right now because I didn't get to them yet. Do it all. That's why we here. I'm not supposed to do all the work. That's right. I can't go to all the hospitals. I can't go to all the emergency. I can't go to all the places at the same time. But we can. When you're in the body, man, you carry the same anointing. That's it. Amen. Come on. When you're in this body, if you're truly in, you carry the same anointing. Yeah. If you can't get the job done, you can get something done. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Until we can get there. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Help us help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to say this, and then we're going to close this part of the service out. But Mother's Day is coming up, and we got some elderly mothers. I would love to get them here and spoil them a little bit. Amen. 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 You already had a plan, Pastor. I figured y'all did. But I want to be a part of that plan. Yeah. We all should want to be a part of that plan. Yeah. Get y'all mamas here. Yeah. Well. Everybody that's got a mama, get your mama here. Amen. Amen. Everybody that's got a mother, get your, get them here. Amen. Let's spoil them a little bit. Amen. They deserve it. My, my, my mama didn't do a whole lot. She birthed you. She did a whole lot. A whole lot. Come on. She didn't. She didn't let them stick a wire up in you and, and pull and pull your arm off and your leg off and your head off and snatch you out of their womb. She brought you here. Cause there are millions. They say 1.6 million children are aborted every year, just in this country. 1.6 million. Since 1998, Amen. since 1998, 1 1.6 million plus kids are killed every year in this country. Makes a covenant, he keeps it. Even when we don't. Even when we don't, he keeps it. And some way, somehow, his angels on assignment gently prod us back with a word here, a word there from somebody that you don't even know. Because most of the time when we get like that, we, we get away from folks that we know. We run and hide. We tear out, we make excuses why we can't be in the service. Why we can't come to church. Because we don't want nobody that we know to see us. Because they know us a little bit. We don't really know everybody all the way. But when I'm around you enough, let my mom say, I, she has a wonderful gift. Yes, she does. Mama, hey, she got a wonderful gift. Yeah. Somebody go missing, she called me on the phone and say, Where's so and so? Right? I've been praying for them. Uh, and it don't be a day, the next Sunday, they show up. Because yeah. she prayed for them. Amen. When she don't see you, and she don't have your number, she just pray. We need to all do that. I don't see you, and I don't know where you're at. Don't talk about them. Genuinely pray for them. Don't get on the phone and say, baby, so and so going to be messing up because I, 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 I ain't seen them. No, 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 no. Go in your closet and lift them up before the Lord. Go in your closet and lift them up before the Lord. Genuinely to God. And God will touch them wherever they are. And at the appointed time, he'll bring them back into the fold. Our job is to love without dissimulation, without being picky. I'm going to choose over love today. I don't like marriage today, so I ain't going to love her. I like Lord Jesus, but I don't like marriage. So marriage was nasty, but I ain't saying that. I ain't going to love her anymore. No, no, no. Love without dissimulation. I need to go out of my way to love that person that man that's hard to love. I need to go out of my way to love that person that's hard to love. Because in doing so, amen, their love will spring forth out of them because of the love I'm showing them. 
Christ went out of his way to love the unlovable. Yes. And he was criticized for it. But other folks hated him. He went out of his way to love them. And in loving them, he brought them to himself. And he said, well, you in my hand? Nobody can pluck you out. When he holds you in the palm of his hand, no devil, no demon, nobody, not even ourselves, not even ourselves. But we are our own enemy. <laughs> Y'all know that. We are our own enemy. Not even ourselves can mess it up. Because he's for us. He's for us. The idea of the mask of the universe, Pastor Lord, considering me, the master of the universe, mm -hmm. considering a dot, yes. a grain of sand, yes. and love me on top of that. Where can you go to find a God like that? Yes. That loved me so much, he refused to let me go. Mm -hmm. He'd hold on to me. Yes. You ever have those children in there that were always rebellious? You try to hold them to you, you, you try to hold them all you can, and they kick and scream and want to get away. But because you love them, you hold them, Jesus. and eventually they calm down. And you just look them in the face and say, "Okay, now that's not going to work. You can't fight me. I'm bigger than you. You can't win. That's what God tells us. I'm bigger than you. You can't win." You can't outsmart me. You can't outthink me. I'm bigger than you. I'm omnipotent. I got all power. The little power you got, I gave you. I'm omniscient. I mean, I know everything. You can't hide it from me. I don't know what we can hide from one another a little bit. <laughs> you can't hide everything. Man, I, we, we, was, we was somewhere, me and my wife one day, and we was like thousands of miles. Florida. And we was coming down the, uh, the escalator. Hey, Bishop. <laughs> what are you doing here? What you doing here? I said, we're on vacation. Well, we are on vacation. I'll, I'll be so glad I ain't doing that wrong. <laughs> Somebody? Can I help somebody? Let's go get out of here. Here's what you need to do. Understand this. The only person you need to impress is God. You ain't got to impress me. You ain't got to impress your neighbor. You ain't got to impress your sister. You ain't got to impress your brother. You ain't got to impress your boss. You ain't got to impress nobody but God. And if you get God's attention, he smiles in your direction. Wow. You can make your request known. I guarantee you, whatever it is, it's done. And because God is omnipresent, you can't leave his sight. You can't leave his sight. I don't know what this thing is now, but stop sneaking around. Just be yourself. That's right. That's right. Just be yourself. Stop worrying about what other folks think about you. You know, they're going to dictate, uh, you know, you're going to dictate your life and you're going to have no life. Be yourself. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grow. The word grow is the primary word. Grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're growing. My job is to let you grow. Not to judge you, Amen. but to let you grow. Well, yeah. Not to judge you, but to let you grow. Amen. Not to judge you, but to let you grow yeah. at your pace. Yeah. Everybody doesn't grow at the same rate. Right. My job is to love you right where you are. To be a good example in front of you. One that, amen, my life's not winking and blinking so that you can say, okay, that's a good point of, to, of reference. But even then, you better stay in the Word. Amen. Well, 
Because anybody is subject to fall. Anybody. I don't care how boastful they are about how awesome they are. Anybody can fall at any moment. Except for the grace of God, they'll go out. Except for the grace of God, we could be in that same, same shape. I used to catch myself sometimes judging folks, you know. How in the world? Why? I, I was the, the other night. I'm, I'm fussing. <laughs> I'm coming out. I got my hat on that says Jesus is my boss. So they could, you know, I, I like wearing my hat. So these two guys in a two year old brand new vehicle almost, they had the gas pump. Two young guys. They checked my hat out. So I'm coming out of the store. I was paying for my gas. Would you help uh, us out for? Uh, some gas, we need some gas for, uh, to get home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, why y'all out here with a nice car like this? Right. Y'all can't get home. <coughs> uh, when well, you man to God, uh, you can help us out. I said, I almost got angry. <laughs> I almost got angry. Now you gonna, you gonna try, you gonna try to be 10 cents smart because you see my hat on my head and you gonna try to con me out some money. Well, but I, 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 gave, I gave him a few dollars. I said, but you just quit that before you get in trouble. Quit that before you get in trouble. Our light got to be shining. Children of God, our light's got to be shining. It is time to come back, not only to the temple, but to bring the glory back to the house. And everybody in here must carry the glory. Everybody in here must carry the glory. Everybody must carry the glory. Not just the pastor. Not just the elders. Not just the deacons. Not just the ministers. Everybody must carry the glory. The young kids got to carry the glory. I was so shocked. There's a few good things on Facebook. I saw this little girl preaching up so. I was like, what? Tear it down. A little, 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 little boy about the same size. Tear it down. I'm like, I was almost embarrassed. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. This little kid preaching like this. The glory, man, can feel anybody. The glory can feel anybody. It wants to dwell in anybody that will open up their doors. Stand on your feet.